Anaya, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Uh, let me see. Only eight of you are here. Okay. Okay. Just soon. I want to get the nine and uh, Susan. Uh, Mandula. Okay. Nine. Last time there were thirteen. Ten. Okay. Susan, Manjula, Anaya, and who else? Naomi and uh, Lucio. Anybody else? Okay. Now you meet the soon. Susan, Sena, Eleven, Chandima, Nilit. Okay. I think we can start now. It is uh, three o'clock. We have to be punctual. Uh, today is the third talk on Mangala Sutta. I like all of you to repeat after me the Pali stanza of Mangala Sutta. That is, I recite, you repeat after me. Asevanach Balanang. Say, I cannot hear you loudly. Asevanach Balanang. Pandita Nancha Sevana Pandita Nancha Sevana Puja Nianang Puja Puja Nianang Etang Mangala Muttamang Okay, let us repeat again. Asevanacha Balanang Asevanacha Balanang Pandita Nancha Sevana Pandita Nancha Sevana Puja Cha Puja Niyanang Puja Cha Puja Niyanang Etang Mangala Muttamang Okay. I mentioned last time we discussed Asevanacha Balanang. And we discussed who the Bala foolish are. Then I discussed Pandita. Who are the Pandita? What is this green screen? Hmm? But you still hear me, right? Hello? Can you hear me? Hello? 
can hear you. Okay. Okay, today we are going to discuss uh, Pooja to Pooja Niyana. The honor the worthy ones. The meaning of the whole stanza is to associate with not with the foolish. Asivana Chabalanang to associate not with the foolish. Pandita Nanchasevana to be with the wise. Puja Pujaniyanang to honor the worthy ones. Etang Mangalang Uttamang, this is a blessing supreme. Uttama means supreme. Okay. Today we take the third line honor the worthy ones. Who are the worthy ones? I'll explain it. Uh, uh, I hope I, somebody uh, turn off this green screen. But anyway, can you hear me? Yes, can... we can hear, Monday. Okay. Okay. Let us. Uh, uh, what, who is the worthy ones? Worthy ones are the Buddha. We respect the Buddha. And noble members of the Sangha. Sangha means uh, disciples who are monks, nuns, who have attained some higher state of attainment. Monks, nuns, even among lay people, there are people who attain higher states of liberation, men and women. They are the ones worthy of reverence. We must respect them. We must respect good friends. Who are the good friends? Good friends. Okay, can you hear me? Right? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, good friends are very, very important for our entire life. Good friends, uh, one day, Venerable Ananda the Buddha's personal attendant went to the Buddha and said, Venerable Sir, good friend, good friends, uh, companions and associates are half the spiritual life, half the spiritual life. Then Buddha corrected him. Buddha said, no, no, Ananda, don't say that. Not so, Ananda. Good friends, companions and associates are the whole of spiritual life. A mendicant with good friends companions and associates can expect to develop and cultivate the Noble Eightfold Path. You learn the Noble Eightfold Path, right? You learn it. To cultivate the Noble Eightfold Path, 
we must have a good friend. A good friend, Buddha said, just as the dawn is the signal of the rising sun, before sun rises there is dawn in the morning. The dawn is the signal of rising sun. That means as soon as we, have see, we see dawn in the morning, we know what happens after that. Sun rises. Sun rises. So the Buddha says, so is friendship with the good, the forerunner of the noble eightfold path. When you have a good friend, good friend is the signal that we are going to learn the noble eightfold path. I think you all know the noble eightfold path. I repeat it for you to remember. Right understanding, right intention, right speech, right action, right livelihood, right effort, right mindfulness, and right concentration. These are the Noble Eightfold Path. When you see a noble, good friend, we call in Pali Kalyanamitta. Remember the word Kalyanamitta. K-A-L-Y-A-N-A-M-I-T-T-A. Kalyanamitta. Kalyana Mitta, K A L Y A N A M I T T A Mitta, Kalyana Mitta. Kalyana Mitta is the Pali word for good friend. The good friend, when you see a good friend, that good friend is the signal of you are going to learn the Noble Eightfold Path. He doesn't uh, tell you anything wrong to do. He or she always tells you the right thing to do. That person always prevent you from doing wrong things. When you are going to get into trouble, this good friend always come to help you and tell, don't do that. If you do this, you have problem. You destroy your life. You fail your exams. You mess up your mind. So good friend always tells you the right thing and prevent you from doing wrong thing. Good friend helps you to live a healthy life, peaceful life. Good friend advise you to speak correctly. Do right thing. And so good friend has a lot of things to tell you. Good friend listen to you very carefully with patience. When you have a problem and you need help, you talk to your friend, he will listen to you very carefully, patiently. 
when you tell him or her a secret, your very topmost secret, good friend will never repeat it to anybody. Good friend, keep the free secret. Never let you down. Good friend, always by you to help you when you are in pain, depression, disappointment, losing something, good friend is there to help you. When you need something, without any hesitation, you can tell your good friend. You feel safe and secure with a good friend. Good friend never betray you. And therefore we must respect good friends. This is called Pooja Aja Pooja Niyana. They are worthy of your respect. They are worthy of your respect. Then, <clears throat> you can rely on good friends. They are trustworthy. They never cheat you. Even if you ask him to hold million dollars, he will hold it and he never take one penny out of that. He always return it whenever you need. So he is very trustworthy person. When you are in sick, when you are sick, he is there to help you. He or she is there to. This good friend can be a girl or boy. Another good friend is your parents, mother, father, and your teachers. They are good friends. And one day, when the Sariputta went to the Buddha and after respecting the Buddha, when the Sariputta sat down in one on one side, then Buddha asked him, Sariputta. You have heard the word Sota Panda or Sota in Pali Sota means ear or the stream of water. Venerable Sariputta said, Venerable Sir, Sota means this noble eightfold path. Sota Panna means one who enters or attains the Noble Eightfold Path. So, therefore, in order to attain that state, you have to have four qualities. Good friend will provide these qualities. What are they? Listening to Dhamma. Listening to a true Dhamma. Right Dhamma, not wrong Dhamma. <coughs> and good friend facilitate for you to 
listen to good dhamma and good friend will help you to practice mindfulness most of the people are not mindful good friend will help you to practice mindfulness and good friend help you to practice dhamma when you go off track when you just waste your time and make yourself restless worry fear anxiety tension good friend comes and tells you how to practice dhamma and therefore good friend is very very helpful good friend is the person with integrity good friend himself or herself has honest honor and dignity integrity associate with him respect that person because when you respect good friend you learn many things from that good friend good friend person you respect is a very grateful person if you have done something even very little help you have given to that person he is very very grateful to you we must respect that person we must respect that person's honesty sincerity and gratefulness we must respect that person and we respect a one who does his duty and in return he will help you and we must respect him i am giving the qualities of the person whom we should respect puja to pujaniyana and the other one is all these are very important qualities other one of a good a person person whom you respect is that that person practice metta metta you know metta loving friendliness that person practices loving friendliness without expecting anything from you for that person everybody is a friend everybody is a friend that person can be a man or woman girl or boy parents or teachers if they practice metta loving friendliness we must respect him if the person practices practices compassion we must respect him compassionate person has a very soft heart gentle heart compassionate persons 
always come to help somebody in trouble that can that be human or animal sometimes animals also are in danger in trouble injured so compassionate person would take time spend energy use that person's skill to help that person or animal who is in danger who is in trouble who is weak and we must respect that person and we must respect person who appreciate your success when you are successful a person who appreciate your success instead of becoming jealous you respect that person because what that person expresses is a very high quality if somebody jealous of your success that person is not worthy of your respect so buddha asks us to respect those who are worthy of our respect you cannot demand respect you cannot tell others that i have a lot of money you respect me oh i have great education therefore you respect me i have i am very pro- famous therefore you respect me like that nobody can demand respect the person must earn respect how the person earn respect that person does something very very noble the things that i have mentioned already he should do or he or she should do then everybody respect that person so we must learn the qualities of the person worthy of our respect so so one who help the poor destitute the sick the weak we must respect that person that person is worthy of our respect our honor then <clears throat> one who uh, support the needy without any discrimination one who is very generous and support others without expecting anything in return that person deserves our respect that person can be a man woman boy or girl doesn't matter because that person is supporting others especially the needy that person deserves our respect and someone who obey the law country's law religious law family's law school's law there are various categories of law of course all the laws are there for our own smooth living for our own peaceful living to to avoid quarreling avoid creating problems 
to avoid crimes. Those who are worthy of reverence, our, our respect, as I said, the best one is the Buddha. Why we respect the Buddha? The Buddha was perfectly clean, pure, enlightened, full of compassion, full of all the qualities that we mentioned. Buddha has all these qualities that I mentioned. And therefore, he is worthy of our reverence. So, when Ananda said, the good friendship is half the way of noble spiritual life, Buddha corrected him and said, don't say Ananda, don't say that. This, the good friendship is the entire peace, the entire spiritual life, noble life. It is a good friend who always set an example to others. So, we must learn to respect such person. And also, one who deserves our respect is the one who protects the environment. He does not want to pollute the environment. When, the, when you pollute the environment, you make people sick, you make animals sick, you pollute water, air, and you bring all kind of problems heart problems, kidney problems, liver problems, even brain problems, they can create by wrong environment. Therefore, good friend or good person who deserves our respect is a one who protects the environment. And therefore, when we say, when we respect the one worthy of respect, we have to consider all these factors, keep all of them in mind. And then when we respect them, how can that be a blessing? We mentioned three, not to associate with the fools, to associate with the wise, and respect those who are worthy of respect. How can these three factors bring blessing? Bring blessing. Blessing here is that the society where this kind of this kind of people live everybody is happy. That's a blessing. Everybody is peaceful. That's a blessing. People can live a healthy life. That's a blessing. People can, people can live harmonious life. That's a blessing. People can live without crimes. That's a blessing. So, people learn to learn Dhamma, 
to make their mind peaceful, that's a blessing. So these three practice is a blessing for everybody. Because society is healthy society. People are healthy people. People live, uh, live uh, harmoniously, work together in friendliness. These are the benefit of, these are the blessings. And Buddha's blessing, all the blessings he mentions are very, very practical blessings. So friends, children, our plan is to talk half an hour. I spoke a little longer because the subject is so important. Now it is time for you to ask me questions. Last time most of you asked very good questions. I'm pretty sure even today you will ask me good questions. Okay. Anybody? Dante, I have a question. Yes. What is the best way to respect the Buddha? The best way to respect who? The Buddha. Yes. Best way to respect the Buddha? Yes. Ah, uh, yes. That's a very, very good question. Very good question. The best way to respect the Buddha, uh, Anaya, is to follow Buddha asks us to do. In order to respect the Buddha, we do what he asks us to do and avoid what he asks us to avoid. For instance, Buddha asks us to uh, abstain from killing. We must abstain from killing. That's how we respect the Buddha. He asks us to abstain from stealing. We abstain from stealing. He asks us to abstain from sensual misconduct. We abstain from that. He asks us to abstain from telling lies. We abstain from that. He asks us to not to uh, use drinks and drugs that causes uh, heedless and infatuation. We avoid that. Buddha asks us not to uh, use harsh language. We avoid that. Buddha asks us not to uh, use uh, slanderous talk, you know, ca calling uh, people sort of backbiting. Uh, we avoid that. Buddha asks us to abstain from just mere wasting time by gossiping. We avoid that. On the other hand, <coughs> we, uh, we mention several items of uh, uh, one who is worthy of reverence, worthy of respect. So we try to follow those things in order to respect the Buddha. We try to be a Kalyanamita, we try to be a good friend. You not only try to follow a good friend, you become a good friend to others. You become a good friend to others. And this is how we respect the Buddha. Okay, the best way to respect the Buddha is to do what he asked us to do. That is the best way to respect the Buddha. Thank you. You are welcome. It's a very good question. 
Pante, I have a question. Yeah. You mentioned why we respect Buddha, but can you explain why we respect Sariputra and Mughalana? Ah, that also is a very good question. Sariputra is second only to the Buddha in wisdom, compassion, patience, and uh, he was uh, uh, living a very noble life, very much like the Buddha. You know, Sariputta was so great that sometimes when Buddha delivered a sermon, and sometimes Buddha had a backache or headache because of his, he was aging because of his age. Sometimes he had uh, uh, little uh, health problems. So he started giving a sermon. Then if he has a headache or backache, he stopped the sermon and asked Vendaba Sariputta to come and continue the sermon. Is he, uh, who asked the question? Anudi. Anna. Anudi. 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 Okay, Anudi. Who can, suppose I start giving a talk and halfway I stop and ask one of you to continue. You cannot do that because you don't know what I was planning to talk. But when the Sariputta was so great that when Buddha stopped his talk halfway, and ask him to continue. Venerable Sariputta continued the talk exactly like the Buddha. And Buddha was so humble, he was listening to Sariputta's Dhamma talk. And at the when Sariputta finished his talk, then Buddha said, Sadhu, 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 excellent, excellent, excellent. Because Buddha saw that Venerable Sariputta continued the sermon that Buddha started. And Sariputta also has a great patience. Uh, one day, <clears throat> Sariputta was uh, going in his arms round with the arms pole in his hand. He was going from house to house to collect food. Then there were people, few people sitting by the road, and they, one of them said, uh, uh, this monk, pointing to Vendabhai Sariputta, and said, uh, this monk has a lot of patience. So another monk said, another man said, come on, let me check. I don't think he has much, so much patience. So he went to the road and gave a big blow to Vendabhai Sariputta from behind. The blow was so strong that Sariputta was thrown a few feet ahead. But Sariputta did not even turn back to see who beat him. This man felt awful that Vendabhai Sariputta's but Sariputta did not react. So he went before Sariputta and bowed down to him and asked him to forgive him. Sariputta asked him, why you won't you ask me to forgive you? He said, I beat you. Oh, I said so. I forgive you. Don't worry. Then this man thought, uh, this is not sincere. He thought, if you really forgive me, you come and have lunch in my house. Sariputta said, okay, I can have lunch in your house. When he was having lunch in this man's house, Sariputta heard a lot of big commotion outside. People were challenging, get him out, get him out, we want to beat him, we have to beat him, get a club to beat him, get a rock to beat him, we don't want to use the fish to beat him, and so forth. When the Sariputta knew, ah, uh, oh, oh, this man is going to get into trouble. 
when the Vasariputra, after eating, gave his arms bowl to this man. So long as he has the Vasariputra's arms bowl in his hand, these people would not beat him. So, when this man came out of the house with Vendabha Sariputta, these people asked Vendabha Sariputta, Vendabha Sariputta, take your arms bowl back, take your arms bowl back from this man. Sariputta asked them, why? Because we want to beat him. But Sariputta asked, why do you want to beat him? Because they beat you. Uh, if he beat me, I forgave him. You don't have to worry, you go home. So, see the greatness of Vendama Sariputta, how much patience he had, how much compassion he had, how much wisdom he had. And therefore, this is only one example. There are many such examples in Vendama Sariputta's life. For this reason, and many more, we respect Vendama Sariputta. And Moggallana, is when Sariputta, Sariputta and Moggallana are two chief disciples of the Buddha. And Moggallana has a lot of miraculous powers. Using his miraculous powers, he prevented people from doing wrong things. When, when the Sariputta ordained somebody, as a novice, Venerable well, Moggallana trained him for his higher ordination. So these are so uh, working together in friendliness, cooperating with each other to uphold the honor and dignity of the Buddha's dispensation. And therefore, Venerable well, Sariputta and Moggallana also deserve our respect. That's a good question. Anudi? Thank you, Bhante. Okay. Any other question? Bhante, I have a question. <laughs> Who is that? Tehasa. Tehasa. Yes, Tehasa. Yes. So, if there's a bad friend and they keep on coming to you, how do you prevent them but without hurting them? Okay. Bad friend, uh, in the first place, you try to avoid bad friend. Uh, don't, don't maintain his uh, friendship with him. In my uh, first talk, I mentioned, don't associate with the fools. If somebody is bad to you or to anybody, he is not a wise person. How can somebody be simply bad to anybody? With bad intention, bad intention to do bad thing. He is not a good person. He is not a friendly, he is not a wise person. Try to avoid that person. And if you cannot avoid, if the person is coming towards you, either you tell, that person's parents or tell your parents if you are a child if you cannot defend yourself you tell your your parents or his parents if it doesn't work call the police and they will take care of him or her or if that person's uh, behave in a bad way, you first try to advise him, talk to him. Uh, I don't like your talk. I don't like your uh, approach. I don't like your behavior. Please change it. Otherwise, I will not associate with you. You can tell him, him or her directly. And this, these are the measures you have to take to avoid such a friendship. Okay, uh, Tehasa? Okay, thank you. Okay.
good question <coughs> anybody has any other question not there other question yes so the you listed the qualities that make a good friend but if but must a good friend possess every single one of those qualities uh -huh. or can one quality and not have the others yeah he may not have all of them but he may have most of them he or she may have most of them and uh, uh, so even that is uh, enough for you to respect the person is there any quality that if they don't possess that it can outrule the others let's say one friend is very helpful to people is very nice speaks nice but doesn't go the extra mile to protect the environment can those cancel each other out or now in that case if you know for sure that person doesn't do anything to protect the environment you can point it out you are a very wonderful person you have such and such a wonderful qualities but i would appreciate if you add this quality as well if you also respect the environment that would be even better for you and better for our friendship like that you can encourage the person to uh, develop that quality okay and also remember good friend not only talk to you but good friend is ready to listen to you you see and therefore that person is worthy of your respect okay thank you bante you are welcome bante i have a question yeah pravish there is yeah yeah if there is a friend that you have that um for some reason he doesn't follow your goals or your dreams or believe that you can do it is it it's harmful to stay with him but can you use him as like a motivation to work toward that goal right you know he may he or she may have certain qualities certain very wonderful qualities and uh, uh, if that person does not have some other qualities you can use his wonderful noble qualities for your own development and don't try to follow the other wrong qualities that way you can use his qualities for your own improvement and uh, perhaps that person seeing that you are uh, doing something better than him by following his examples he may also in return uh, may decide to follow what you are doing so this is sort of an exchange of good qualities yeah thank you bante you are welcome okay Miley has questions. I don't have one right now. Yeah. You don't have any? Yes. What is your question? You um explain the best way to respect the Buddha. So when like there's a, there's the five percepts, and one of the five percepts is like abstain from killing any animal. So like if you like find an animal and it's like kind of like harming you, and you do something to it, does it like still count as like purposely doing it? Yes. Uh... <clears throat> some animals uh if you can avoid them 
uh, you can avoid them. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, Mahali, you are Mahali? Yeah. Uh, when you react with fear or with anger, anxiety, tension, and that animal ar ar around you will pick up your emotions, your anger, tension, and sometimes in self-defense that animal may attack you. Just like human beings attack other animal or somebody, first out of fear. Or the person will run away from that person. Similarly, animals, in the first place, they try to avoid you. But if they feel their life is in danger and cannot avoid, they can attack you. So, if you know any particular animal is going to hurt you, harm you, don't stay close to that animal. Avoid it. The Buddha advised us uh, in one discourse called Sabhasava Sutta. He advised us uh, there are places, animals, situation that we must avoid by all means because we those situations, those places, those times are dangerous. We avoid that. Now, if and an, if you remain calm, relaxed, and peaceful, uh, then the animal necessarily doesn't come to you to attack you. Animal becomes uh, even friendly. I think I mentioned in my uh, one of my talks that if we practice metta, one of the things, one of the benefits of practicing metta is that non human beings like you, non human beings is like animals, sometimes divine beings, sometimes ghosts, and so forth, they respect you. They, uh, because you are, you have very peaceful, very relaxed uh, state of mind without any hatred or tension and, and so forth. So therefore, from our state of mind, we can, we can look at our mind and see what kind of state of mind we have. If it is harmful to us and others, we try to avoid it. So animals also will respect that. Sometimes <laughs> Sometimes there are some uh, little insects. They can hurt us because they don't know anything. So we try to avoid them. Okay? Thank you, Bhante. You're welcome, Mahili. Okay. I have little more time for any short question. Okay. <clears throat> Anybody has any question? Dasun, Susan. <laughs> okay. Manuji, Manula, Manju, Manjula. Okay. If you don't have any more any more questions, then we can close the session and uh, encourage others also to join this. This discourse is very important. We discuss three blessings. <coughs> Number one, 
is not to associate with the fools. Number two, to associate with the wise. And number three is to respect who are worthy of respect. And these three are called blessings. But these three become blessings because they make our life easy, make our life peaceful. That is what we get from these blessings. So keep that in mind and see you next week. I told you all, next uh, month in December, December, I, from December to next January, and next March, three months, three months, I take uh, a time off to practice meditation, but, but because of you children, I spend this hour every Sunday at three o'clock just because of you. So you must be very serious and come every Sunday at three o'clock, ask other children also to join at three o'clock. We are discussing very important sutta called Maha Mangala Sutta. Many people don't know the meaning of this discourse, although they recite it by heart. And you children, must learn the discourse, memorize the stanza, and uh, understand the meaning in detail from these talks. Okay, good day. Have a wonderful day. Good day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Very good. Very good. Okay, bye.